If you are comparing four years, four years, MPP administration, energy sector is 300 times better than your mom. But we are still experiencing doom so. Nobody has said we have it. I'm just saying, it's far much better than your mama ever did. You, you do admit that there's doom so. That is the word you use. I have never used that word. I have promised you that we are going to work on it. And it's not a work that is a single event. It's a process. And we'll continue to work on it for the energy sector to become better. Have you heard of calls for a timetable? Ask those who want yes. to, to bring it. The ECG says that there's no timetable coming. Why do you want to bring a timetable? What purpose? Why, why, why would somebody get up and wish evil or bad for the country? Well, so that's the energy minister, Dr. Matthew Poco Brempet there, that why do you want to wish evil for this country that if you are asking for a timetable, then, you, then bring one, essentially, because ECG says that there's really n no need for it. Well, the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PRC, the regulator of the utility space, directed the ECG to produce a timetable based on the said maintenance works that they were going to conduct on some 630 or, or uh, that's transformers that ECG itself had indicated were overloaded as a result of increased demand for electricity. ECG has responded indicating that they have about 33,000 transformers. So just 630 being overloaded cannot be the reason why we have this widespread intermittent power outages, the doom so we're experiencing across the country. It cannot be the reason why. So there must be something more than just this 630 transformers for that matter. Now we are finding out that this may largely be a financial problem because some money is needed to buy fuel to power some of the plants that we have in this country. Some $50 million, we understand, which we're going to get the details right now. And at this point, let me welcome Dan Karamoa, who is the executive director of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPE, and is also an energy analyst. Duncan, it's good to have you. Good morning. Uh, Alfred, good morning. Thanks for having me. Great. And from, let me start this from the, from, from the governor's perspective because of the, the video I just played of the, of the energy minister, Dr. Matthew Poco Prempe. Professor Balfour, you yeah. Now, th th hearing this response from the energy minister, that, look, if you're asking for a timetable, I mean, one, produce one. And also, th the lack of acceptance of the word doom so because it's been politicized to the extent that when the people are experiencing a situation, because we've politicized the problems, the reality is still being denied. How does that strike you? Um, you know, um, in governance, I think when such situations arise, normally we look for who is responsible so that we can hold that unit accountable. But ultimately, it is the executive, the president, who made these appointments to own up to whatever that citizens find to be unacceptable. When you hear key agencies responsible for the energy sector appearing to be contracted, contradicting themselves or not being even with the people, that is to say, lacking transparency on what really is going on. Then in terms of governance, we all begin to wonder whether the center can no longer hold. I'm saying this because this is not a new uh, phenomenon. Uh, besides the fact that we experienced almost seven years ago, and that's what really, to a large extent, led to the demise of the Mahama government in 2016, uh, one would have thought that uh, 
the, the, the next uh, government will take a cue from that and make sure this kind of uh, event does not occur again. But here we are uh, going back to it, and yet our public officials playing a political game with it. Because I'm aware of the PURC's uh, request for, for the ECG to give a timetable, and the ECG's own response that uh, it should be critical. So they are passing the back. And ultimately, the back should stop on the president's desk. By now, I want to believe that the president should have called all these agencies together and give them the marching orders to ensure that the sector is stabilized. Of course, if he has done it privately, I wouldn't know, but publicly, I do not know if this has been done. And that really amazes me. Knowing too well that this issue, this problem led to the fall, at least to a large extent, fall of the previous uh, government, I can't believe that in an election year, they are sitting and playing this kind of a blame game and making statements that are not right, I mean, appropriate for public consumption and all. That amazes me. But having said that, I think what the people want to see is a sector that is stabilized. Whether they have the competence, because I recall seven years ago, the term incompetent became a catchword, a catchphrase for all of us. They were incompetent in doing that, incompetent in doing that. Unfortunately, seven or eight years later, we are witnessing the same kind of uh, performance that uh, brought about the word incompetent. So, in simple terms, I think where the buck stops finally should be where action should begin. In other words, uh, we will want the president to call all these sectors together to stop their public statements that are not really uh, helping their cause and just give them the marching orders to, to, to do what is right for the people. Because, as I say, uh, in governance, uh, especially in the election year, if you do not know, if the center cannot hold, and such an important sector of our country, think of the impact on the economy. Uh, the economy is already, uh, already on its knees, and anything that goes to uh, help uh, further kneeling of the economy, I think it's not something we should pray for. So all I can say is that uh, uh, in terms of governance, uh, uh, if people are failing him, should bring them to order, and show that the writing is done. Otherwise, the people of Ghana naturally will show the verdict of their performance uh, in the coming elections. Professor Buffett, when you stay with me, but thank you very much for your initial thoughts on this matter. Duncan, now, you hear what ECG is saying, and then also the Public Utility Workers Union. I think two days ago, they issued a statement which will be scrolling on the screen, uh, they say that they want even the, the PRC to look beyond just the 630 transformers that they say have been overloaded because they have 33 transformers. So what is happening cannot be the reason why there should be. If it's just on the base of the 630 transformers, then there's no need for a timetable. Now, the Gridco hasn't really been speaking about it, but ECG is asking questions of Gridco because they say that, look, if you reduce the, the amount of power you are giving us, would, it would also influence the distribution that we put out there as well. What is the re real situation? What is happening? Well, thank you, Alfred. Um, I would rather we stick to truth than myths. I would rather we call um, out the issues for what they really are. I would rather we stop massaging the issues uh, and would rather we stop uh, just taking statements, whether you call it doom so or not. Uh, the stark reality is that people go home uh, to unplanned you know, power outages. And the sad thing is that you cannot even plan anything for your own self, uh, especially when uh, there's no timetable. So I have said elsewhere that the difference between the former Doomsa situation and what you have now, which I term as Doomcra, is that at least the Doomsa bit Why? 
Well, this is boom crap because you don't what? even know when it's going to go off. And you don't even know when it's going to come back on. If you had an idea, it helps. If you know that Tuesday morning, uh, your office enclave is not going to have power. Uh, you probably will plan to charge your laptop somewhere so you can get some work done if you still have to be in the yeah. office. Or do out of office work remotely. Uh, unfortunately, you are there and it just happens. Boom, and it's gone. But the ECG uh, in their latest statement said this could be localized faults. And okay. if you're experiencing power outages... You see, Alfred, I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate why uh, they are not being candid with us. And um, I think that for all of us as a generality, we've also not helped them at all because we've done uh, the picky cherry thing for too long. Uh, in 2014-2015, uh, the Energy Ministry commissioned uh, a certain work to be done on the power sector, especially in the, at the height of doom. So what can we do to make ECG uh, a lot more viable? That report exists. Alfred, one of the conclusions of that report was that we should get a PPP, the, the public-private partnership uh, for ECG done. If you recall, at the outset of this government from 2017, uh, they saw that report and decided to implement uh, what infamously uh, became known as the PDS debacle, right? Uh, among the checklists that we should have, you know, been sure existed uh, was the need uh, to do, uh, you know, proper selection so that the people we are actually asking to partner uh, ECG uh, to come in to inject some level of efficiency in the sector, were coming in with at least some minimum investment. Mm -hmm. They were coming in with something that we could hold them to uh, as and when they fail to perform. One of the checklists was that insurance or bond guarantee, which was waived off because we decided as a people and a government to do family and friends, chronism, right? If you recall, one of the fallouts was that the American government through the MCA had a certain 500 million US dollar injection they were going to put out into ECG activities to make them more, more vibrant, more efficient. Mm -hmm. Our own corrupt practices as a people, as a government, saw to it that that investment was taken away. Right? Mm -hmm. Mind you, ECG had a certain timetable that it needed to meet certain efficiency, um, I should call them timelines, right? So you want to reduce transmission losses or technical losses and all of them, right? You want to be able to detect how many people are plugged onto uh, your subsystems illegally. Unfortunately, we decided that the Americans should take their money away. And when we dared them, we had no alternate plan in place, right, mm -hmm. to find the monies elsewhere to inject into ECG. So when I saw uh, Senior Gabi Ochredako lamenting that this seems like, you know, somebody... This is mysterious. Somebody says, is, in fact, we have that, that tweet by Gabi Ochredako. Um, we'll, we'll put it on. It says, what? you kept the light on for seven years. <laughs> and then in, in, in your last year, all of this is happening. You see, you can massage hunger up to a point, but it will expose you up to a point when your body can no longer handle it. You can massage the power sector up to a point, but I have always said, the energy sector is primarily numbers driven, okay? Mm -hmm. You can decide today that, oh, everybody should go and take free fuel if you want, but the numbers will catch up with you because people are consuming something and you are not getting the returns that you need on it. You can decide today to deny all you want that ECG is not uh, having a load shedding program and that it is because of some faulty, I mean, whatever, transformers. That is why we are here. The truth of the matter is that you have not been able to make do your commitments with the IPPs, right? Mm -hmm. You have not been able to make do your financial commitments to WAPCO, the West African Gas Pipeline. You have not been able to inject any capital necessary to the power sector to ensure that the transformers that you are getting are probably as new as they should be. Uh, you are not even able to inject, right, money to a greater efficiency for ECG. ECG goes out there to collect money. The cash water fall mechanism, that should have been in place to ensure that, look, uh, we uh, 
introduced 2% to the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, car power introduced 10%. This one did this. Uh, these are their invoices. Okay, I cannot be able to pay all. Uh, car power, get 60%. You get 40%. Get 80%. Get. That cash waterfall mechanism arrangement is also not being followed. And Alfred, one of the most intriguing things I came across just last week is to the well, extent that... Let, let, let's go back to that slide. Let's go back to the first slide. ECG, in this response to the PRC directive, said that they had complied with the order on the cash waterfall mechanism <laughs> and the payment of the tariff revenues as, as prescribed as of the 26th of March, 2024. And they attached a schedule. And SOEs have been paid. The independent power producers have also been paid their due amounts in Ghana cities. For those IPPs that have to be paid in dollars, the Bank of Ghana is working on, the, on paying the dollar equivalent of payments due. That's the response again. Alfred, the truth of the matter is this. We can massage the power sector all we want with grammar, but the numbers would still expose you. As we speak, the IPPs are owed in excess of 1.5 billion. I am not sure any business... 1.5 billion dollars. Billion USD. I am not sure any business anywhere uh, will be okay enough to continue, you know, taking bank loans, you know, to be able to continue supplying you the power. So some of them will go off at some point. Mm -hmm. Again, we are also not even accounting for what we collect from the people. The other intriguing thing I was about to come to that I found out is to the extent that we are, I mean, supplying close to 150 megawatts, right, uh, to our neighboring countries, Benin and all of them, right? That amount that is realized from the, the power that we supply to these neighboring countries doesn't even come to ECG. Cannot be reported to ECG. Yet ECG, as the off-taker from the power producers, is supposed to pay everything to the power producers. So indirectly, we create a problem in there. We find a way so that the, the revenue inflow stream to ECG is not all accounted for. Then again, you talk of transmission losses, right? As we speak, is about 30%. So what it means is that every $100 million worth of power, right, that is generated, transmission and technical losses alone would account for 30%. 30000000 million will be lost, right? We are not investing. Neither are we even accounting for the power sector properly. Unlike petroleum, I always say this. If you've been able to deregulate the petroleum sector, Making sure that BDCs, you bring product, it is $1, sell for $1 at cost plus, plus margin or markup, right? So that you don't come back to the state to say we owe. If it is the same situation with the power sector, you deregulate it through that PDS arrangement, uh, which has now become, you know, the infamous uh, corrupt, you know, special purpose vehicle that has seen your 200, 300 million Ghana CD sitting with one of the banks, right? which has now become a subject of litigation. When you do these things over a period, Alfred, you are simply burying your head in the sand and pretending that because you cannot see Alfred, the rest of your body, which is open to Alfred, he cannot see it. So we'll continue to manage the power sector with grammar. The sad reality is that people don't go home to their grammar. They go home to power outages. They go home to darkness. The sad thing is you don't even know whether it is coming 10 o'clock, 11, 12, 1 you are there, it comes. If you are lucky. The next morning before you are out, it goes off again. Mm -hmm. You don't even know when it's going to go off, when it's going to come back. And the heat wave in the country. I would want to caution our political, you know, office holders. Perhaps their gen sets are working, right? Perhaps they are privileged. But if you enter normal Ghanaian homes, the kind of heat that greets you, and when they need power to at least get life to a certain normalcy, we don't have the power to give them. We manage them with grammar. I think we are all to blame. We saw the trappings of this seven years ago. In 2017, 2018, PDS, at the height of all of that, we told the MCA to take away their 500 million USD. Alfred, you know how much work that could have done for all of us not to go back to Dumso? I have said, any government that takes over from this government right, be it an MPP government or an NDC government, would suffer the same fate that John Mahama administration suffered because, one, we are not investing in the power sector. 
forgetting that each single year, there's a growth of 20 to 25 percent that you need to plan for. We decided to play the grammar that, that, again. That's growth in terms of the demand for demand. electricity. Yes, yes. Okay. So once the, the demand numbers are growing and you are not planning, you are not plotting, you are not adding or injecting any new streams of generation, it will simply catch up with you. Initially, we were doing a peak of 2,300 um, uh, megawatts. Now we are 3,700, hitting 4,000. So if your install capacity is 5,000 and you need a certain reserve margin, you are not going to get that reserve margin. You cannot operate at the install capacity simply because you've added not a kilowatt. And the distribution Alfred, losses. And the distribution losses also continue to pile up and increase. So Alfred, beyond the grammar, beyond telling us there's nothing wrong, oh no, it's just from transformers that we are dealing with, so don't worry. It's the issue of financing. It's the issue of planning, right? Is the issue of capital injection. How much have we input into ECG's activities by way of technology? Right? Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, elsewhere, in the European countries, mm -hmm. every transformer, the amount of power it, it, it receives is accounted for. Mm -hmm. Every single transformer. Technology would allow you to know when power is going waste elsewhere to be able to track and trace. Mm -hmm. Here, we don't care. We would rather go to the people those who buy prepaid and wipe out their credit sometimes we just wipe it out alfred mm -hmm. you don't do these things and be issuing statements the reality on the ground is that look if you like write all the grammar write phd thesis right mm -hmm. the reality is that when i go home and there's no light it is doomsaw for me well the ecg says that it, it issued over 100 power outage notifications within the first two months two and a half months of the year with the majority attributed to maintenance activities. So over seventy percent of the power outages were due to planned maintenance works. Alfred, let me let me let me their, their, let me let me, let me let me not even glorify that. If you concede issuing over one hundred outage notifications, it tells you there's a lot of pressure on your load or your system, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of problems that would need a certain amount of capital to deal with, right? Your transformers are blowing, right? Mm -hmm. It tells you that some of them are overaged. What kind of audit have we done on them? What kind of pre-planning are we doing on them? Are we just waiting for the overaged, overused, obsolete transformer to blow so that we go and fix? Are we planning? Are we auditing them? Alfred, the whole <laughs> grammar that ECG will construct, all the grammar that they would want us to now focus on Gridco. Ghanaians are saying we don't buy power from Gridco. But, but you would agree that the upstream sector also has questions to answer with what is happening. At least, Alfred, is it not? Because are you, pay, are if, you really if, if paying Ghana about, gas if, for, if, for the gas you take from them? Are you paying them? Does no. Ghana gas indeed have to now go for overdraft sometimes to pay their workforce? They go for overdraft to pay their staff? Check with Bui. We have overrun Bui to a, a certain extent. That Bui at peak cannot even generate half their installed capacity to you. Are we paying them? Is the cash waterfall mechanism working as it should? Exactly what are we doing with the power sector? I have said this. If you can deregulate the petroleum sector, find a way, a reasonable way to deregulate the power sector. Look, Accra West, right? Mm -hmm. Allow people with a certain capacity or muscle to bid, right? Mm -hmm. They can manage the amount of power and distribution uh, network over there. Mm -hmm. If there are issues there, it's easier for them to handle it than ECG dealing with everything across country, except for Netco, right? The okay, northern. Yes. ECG is probably overburdened. And I think that we are also not injecting the necessary capital to help them become more efficient. So we continue to, you know, use grammar, Alfred, as but, a word. So, so, so largely, to, this problem we're experiencing is a financial problem. And it the, will keep the, recurring. Let me put on record. It will keep recurring. Simply because we are not addressing the problem. Which is? The financing okay. of the sector. Right. Alfred, if you don't admit, like I have said, mm -hmm. right? If mm -hmm. you don't admit that it is hunger and you think it is stomach ulcer, you will be applying stomach ulcer medicine. Meanwhile, all you need is food. So until they admit to the issue and have a roundtable dialogue or stakeholder dialogue with everybody, right? To say mm -hmm. this is where we are. These are the challenges. How do we confront them? Does it mean we need to probably add up a little on the tariff? If it is not tariff, 
the export, the power we export, do we need to upscale it so that we can get more revenue to be able to cushion the IPPs here? Mm. If that revenue is even coming to ECG, should it not go straight to the IPPs who are generating the power, mm. right? Unfortunately, 150 megawatts, right, mm -hmm. that we export. The revenue, I am told, doesn't even get to ECG. Yet ECG is supposed to pay the IPPs for generating power. Alfred, there are challenges. If we own up to the challenges, Professor Jampo would always say, you would find a solution. But if you don't own up to the challenges and you think that grammar and beautifying the scenarios or the, 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 the situation mm -hmm. to say that it's transformers that have gone off and we are fixing and it's, bro, we are kidding ourselves. We'll get back to this problem in July. It could get worse before the end of the year. It will get worse by next year because we are simply not finding the fun funding or the financing gap to mitigate so, whatever so, so we should technical... Still, we should still be worried despite the release of the ECG that they've had a stable, you know... You see, mm -hmm. Prof, should we still be just worried the I end of last year, mm -hmm. this issue cropped up. There was power outages here and there. They managed it. You remember the IPPs had issued threats that beyond a certain threshold, they were mm. going to shut down their plants. Yes. Finance Ministry will call the IPPs and issue them with some, you know, assurances or comforts, right? Mm -hmm. We will come back the following month. IPPs are still asking for their monies. They've not been paid to them. We are simply managing the energy or the power sector with grammar, basically. And that is why we are where we are. Until you deal with the problems structurally, until you admit that there's a financing gap between what ECG collects, right, and what we produce. Look, this is a country that is almost subventing power to the tune of 250 million USD every single month. If this is sustainable, let them admit. Hmm. It's not sustainable. Well, let me bring you here. I'm um, because beyond the politics, really, should we, you know, no, I'll not come to you last. Should we not accept the reality that what is happening is impacting on businesses and people in terms of the unannounced outages? Producing a timetable has become more of like a, 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 a political uh, bullet. I don't mean to that, do this. That, 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 that really. Because uh -huh. of these power outages, uh -huh. the most recently commissioned refinery, Centro, yes. has had to go off for days. Yes. Wow. Yes, for days. Because once the refinery is running and they don't have a very reliable backup and the power goes on and off. And Look, you are destroying people's businesses. Give them a timetable. Why, 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 why is the timetable... Really a difficult no, thing. No, uh, let, let them let, plan. Let, 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 let lawyer Amwakwa... Lawyer, sorry for... <laughs> with, uh, ...on this one. Council. Please, if you have why? nothing to say about that, to say so. Because this one, the way you are quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Prof, you are one. <laughs> you are one. And he says, yes, sir. You see, <laughs> you see when, when it comes to power outages and things like that, it's so emotive that um, you, you, you have to talk, because you're addressing the whole of Ghana. And as my senior... Uh, Leonard Fair, Atachi has said, it has no political party. It mm -hmm. has no political colors. You see, so... Um, he has even demanded that there should be a timetable. Exactly. Well, that's, that's, what, that's what he's demanding. But what I'm agreeing with is the fact that it has no party colors. If your area is affected, it is not singled out. So the more we remove politics out of it and address the rare issues, the better. And um, uh, you're saying we're dealing with it, we are, we are using grammar. It is unfortunate that um, whilst you are taking steps to solve the problem, you must also be communicating. Okay. All right. So you're communicating it to come across as um, using grammar, which is not the case. The fact that this is, needs to be done. We, we made a lot of noise all right, mm -hmm. in 2015. I, mean, I, I suppose you're you going to play uh, another, another senior of mine's mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, message was given mm -hmm. as response to some question and so we made a lot of noise on that on the back of that so we are not absolved from those who use politics in this thing it is mm -hmm. now such a national issue that we shouldn't politicize it mm -hmm. the fact is that we have this problem we need to take steps to solve those problems um ecg will come out 
because it looks like they are, you see, they are the low hanging <laughs> fruit on, on the structure. It will be the last and end it, to exactly. the Exactly. And that's what we know. The person coming to my house to, to, to disconnect or disconnect, or if I go, I don't go to Greek, I go to ECG. All right. That is why all focus on ECG. But if you look at PR, PRUC's own. Uh, um, uh, uh, There's a catch water for mechanism report. Yeah. That's what it you're says. Reading. It says that ECG, so order one, has been complied with. One A, B, C, D, which includes a catch uh, waterfall mechanism, mechanism um, the standing committee shall approve the revenue allocated. All those have been complied with. What is outstanding is 2C on what they have said. 2C, 23C, 23E, 23F. All right. And even for, for 2C, it says publication submitted. So they are now looking at it. So mm -hmm. we need to be realistic about the fact that there's a problem mm -hmm. as we're taking steps to solve them. We need to be communicating. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a, there's a, a reportage here on the 26th of March. One power outage was due to uh, grid coal on the Malian bulk uh, uh, supply point. Yes. And that caused a Monday power outage. So, mm -hmm. you see, I agree with you that we have an issue, we have a problem at hand. Yes. But I also want us to be realistic about the fact that certain things happen and that triggers the pathogens we, 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 we face and we need to take steps to solve them. In solving them, we are not running away from the issue. And you were saying that it will happen in July. I hope not. It happened next so. year. I hope, I hope so not. Too, lawyer. Because <laughs> for anyone in the energy industry, mm -hmm. we know the power of this concept of energy security globally. And so we should rather be positive in solving. Yes, if I go home and I don't have power and uh, I have not, you know, done something. There's a day I drove, I'd finished lectures, uh, and then I was told that there's no power in my area. I drove all the way to Kukum Limit for my power bank at mm -hmm. 10. And then Got back, back at 10.30, then there was power. Exactly. You see, mm -hmm. so it's not, it's not... So there's a need in, for a timetable. In stricter sense, so timetable like that because at some point there was no power within 30 minutes power came so you you would imagine that the timetable solved the whole problem no there are instances where you will need some shelter if it's needed there are instances where you 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 it is a localized problem for instance the notice that was given on the 28th says that which is yesterday isn't it that says that uh, from the national perspective for ecg not Greek code, not, you know, there's a whole value chain. Mm -hmm. For them, there's no issue. So if something happens, it's localized. Mm -hmm. In that, and they give you the number so that you communicate with your local point and they solve. I've had to call um, 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 the, the local point in instances where we think there's power outage. Mm -hmm. I think that positive outlook towards it, bear in mind that, and, and, and as I said, there's no colors. I face it, I feel it. I will, I will, there are times where in my office, if I have to do something, I know power outage, I don't have a generator there. I suffer. I have to file something in court. I have to look at things. There's no denying of that fact. Now, if it means that there's a broader discussion, all the value chain coming, sitting down, engaging them. So what we know, Ghana as a nation, this is what we have. Depoliticizing it. Mm -hmm. This is what we have. What steps we need to take. In the same vein, and I'm not bringing this matter back, in the same vein where we are heavily reliant on donor agencies and whatnot to augment our budgetary um, requirements. Mm -hmm. And we are saying, come rain or shine, we don't want this uh, lifestyle. And they are saying, they are, we told you, we said, you can withhold it. Then we all understand that this is the step we take. We are proud about that. It comes with these consequences. And therefore, we will not, it's not a matter of politics. It is that we have decided we want this. In the same way, if we're able to bring these matters up with, with this, let's draw a line and say, yes, we've all done some politicking with partages. Mm -hmm. From now, this is what? If you're talking about 1.5 billion USD. Exactly. All okay. right. 
that is not something we should we should we should we, we could just try for that is debt or the ipps yes See, i mean talking, that's what you are saying I'm no not, in fact that's actually what, 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 yeah, no, that's what, what it is yeah yes. but I, I need as a person sitting here okay to verify personally but fair I'm point not fair point i'm saying that if that's the case it, it is we, we just draw the line let's let's depoliticize it and let's go forward and say oh, these are the steps we think we have to take if it's a whole chain Let's not lump some everything on this. Yes, that's a face. That's a person we are seeing. All right. Let's not lump some um, everything on them. If they are speaking, let's look at the whole value chain, and then we can begin to address these things. But council, long term, why right, taking putting certain things in place, not politicizing it, but, and but, not creating a doom picture. But council, picture. I just wanted to make that point in the court, <laughs> not to, in the court, no, 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 politicized so much that even accepting the reality that the people are faced with is a problem for government that we shouldn't call it doom so is you call it doom or something else and so but the realities of the people is what they are faced with because of the politics there's a difficulty in even accepting that there's a problem Exactly. And right. even having a timetable of a sort that you talk about, that there mm -hmm. should be something of sort to guide people's lives, that is because of the politics. Precisely, my point. That's where we are. So let's depoliticize it <laughs> and but, solve the problem. But, but you don't, don't accept. You don't, you're that. not even accepting that there's a problem. <laughs> Nobody's saying we are not. Uh, but when you go to your house, and, and you don't have one. are you is it that someone accepting it or not accepting maybe it maybe those it who is, are talking about it, it don't is, sleep in darkness that's not the issue that's not the issue you see you're also fomenting the same politicization of it but that's, the issue that's, is that's the narrative yeah, yeah, yeah but, but we cannot create continue creating this narrative without mm. looking for solutions that's the point i'm making we have to but what we want, want if you don't admit it, there's a problem how do you find a solution how do we not admit there's a problem because mm. minister when, is that is when he is not but i just played the minister's no, no, voice to you don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, he played that voice lawyer. don't don't <laughs> cloud everything with a minister's yes. voice but he's there's the a minister. specific issue <clears throat> All right, the specific issue that people are saying ECG must, and he is saying ECG is saying they don't have to issue it now. You can make and, an issue and, and as that, to and that we should create our own timetable. You can make Lord. an issue as to the tone, the how, the body posture. You can make an issue out of and that. And telling us to but, create our own timetable. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That you can so make, he's not admitting you can there's make a problem a, and there's no, a need for a timetable. You can make an issue table. with that. Please, we all right? have something to now, <laughs> the the. <laughs> <laughs> we also have something to but ECG issues, ECG issues, <laughs> ECG issues statement. statements and notices. Let's take it. They, they, at least they are the people you see directly. True. All right. And if they are saying, let's look at some other things, let's look at that. Okay. Rather than trying to, and, and we've all been there, trying to gain as much political capital we can get out of this. We are all uh, doing ourselves. Unfortunately, <laughs> it is what we saw playing out in 2015 2016 it's also that, that. Has always been and it's a cyclical and, and thing see, and no one benefits the, from the, that. And, uh, professor jump with you because this borders you should, largely you, you, on you shouldn't be sermonizing <laughs> like this but <laughs> why shouldn't i be sermonizing? no 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 hold on you should come no, for no, this no, yeah. you you people hold shouldn't on. be yeah. Yeah. Keep quiet hold about why should i get now you're muzzling my right you are no 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 hold on no 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 i don't i don't do politicize oh okay and when it was being politicized, we didn't hear you saying they should stop politicization. Uh, honestly, that's all the problem. Uh, honestly, um, um, Alfred Samuel Dubik Mahama, I, I, I pity him because he had started so well in building a certain public confidence in the ECG and the power sector. Um, his determination to, as it were, go collect his light bill from people i mean made me feel that look ghana would work with the appointment of the right people to the right places i i i, I have a lot of respect for him and a lot of admiration for him and the hard work that he was doing but unfortunately what is happening now 
is eroding the you know, public confidence in the hard work or in, in, in the ECG and the kinds of things that um, he set out to do. It's mm -hmm. in the public confidence. Tomorrow, how, what will be your justification to go knock at the door of people demanding that they pay um, their life? So the public confidence that is being eroded um, worries me. But you see, let me say this. I'm doing a certain research project that so takes me out of my home to a place that is serene that I can keep writing. And honestly, because they have a power plant, lights don't go off there. Mm. And so for some time, when people were talking about Dumso, I, I, thought, I thought that they were just um, making, it, so it was you know, doing something too much. I mean, why are you always complaining about Dumso? And so it went on. I've been there for some time. I don't stay in my own home just trying to finish a certain write-up. Um, until recently that I visited my mother. Mm -hmm. And um, I was talking to her, and then power went off. Oh, and I said, okay. So we sat from morning to evening. In the evening, somewhere, power came, and we're happy talking, talking. It went back. It went off again, and then it didn't come till the following morning. Morning, it came briefly, and then it went off again. And so. I started thinking about it. That was well, this what we've been experiencing and people have been talking about. And my view is that, you see, maybe me, I didn't know um, the, the negative or the, the, the impact or the effect because I'm working somewhere mm -hmm. where power doesn't go off. But what, 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 what I want to say is that, you see, when we select or we elect leaders and we rank fence them, from the problems they are elected to solve, the problems do not get solved. What am I trying to say? See, the kind or caliber of people who are leading us, I'm not sure they are experiencing doom so. Because, I mean, for starters, everyone will have a genset that automatically comes on when power goes off. And so if you don't appreciate the problems that people feel, it becomes difficult for you to fashion out a proactive solution to the problem. Mm. You would tend to pussyfoot the problems mm -hmm. and always trying to manage it, talking people like you're saying, talking grammar with the view to just postpone a proactive solution to it. Mm. A developing country like Ghana, in my view, must be led by people who live with the problems and who understand the problems. And so in trying to select leaders to lead us, we must be careful. Let's look at their background. What have they done before? Do they understand our problems? Do they identify with our problems? Mm -hmm. This is what we have to do That's in right. selecting people. If you, want to if you want leaders who will be able to deal with doom so, they should be leaders who have experienced doom so Perfect. and they continue to experience it. And so in determining, in looking at the background, you should be careful that those we are selecting understand our problem. We should also be careful about those who will deliberately be drinking calipo to symbolize <laughs> identification with the, 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 the problems the of the masses. For some people, no, no, oh, let me finish. Let me finish. No. Some people would deliberately go and be drinking Calipo to tell Ghanaians that, look, we identify, identify with, you. with you. We should be careful in looking at them. Look, let me say this. You see, despite his military background and his military bravado, mm -hmm. Rollins mm -hmm. feared the people. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you this. Mm -hmm. You can search. My mentor, Professor Bad Fouad is here. Mm -hmm. Despite his military bravado and his military background, mm -hmm. Rollins was always concerned with what the people would say. He feared the people, the voices of the people. And that's how come one of the ways he deployed in ensuring that he, de he dealt with his fear of the people was his identification with the people. So he identified himself with the people. Okay. Unfortunately, in a supposedly superior democratic system, far, far better than Rawlings' dictatorship. We do not want to hear the voices of the people and address their concerns. We don't even want to hear the voice of the people so that we'll be able to address their concerns. Mm. So officials of states 
and political apparatchiks of this particular government are now instilling a certain fear and panic in the people such that the people are now being forbidden. You see, you, you want to forbid the people from describing the situation in which they are going through. Now, people are, I mean, yesterday somebody was telling, hey, it's doomed so bad, I'm afraid to even say it. See, now, so people are now being they are afraid to say uh, it. <laughs> made to be scared in describing what they are going through. So now they say, don't call it doom, sir. Call it this. Don't call it that. Are you the ones to detect how we describe a problem we are going through? You see, it is the height of... I don't think that it is about doom, sir, or doom, CC or whatever. What Ghanaians want is to keep Ghana, is for Ghana to be kept switched on. Whether it is doom, sir, or doom, whatever, is inconsequential to, to what Ghanaians want. We, we are looking for a Ghana that is switched on. That is it. And so for me, it is arrogance to attempt to offer explanations to doom so and the situation we face, whilst, whilst also making us think that the others who we, that we experience doom so under them they don't have any explanation. As for you, as for this particular regime, mm -hmm. there are uh, explanations as to why the light, the light goes on and, you know, comes, comes on, <laughs> goes, goes off and comes on. But the other regimes, they didn't have any explanation. And so we shouldn't call. I mean, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And so I am saying that in trying to elect leaders, in trying to sub, submit ourselves to people to lord over us, we should always be careful in being sure that these are people who have lived our problems. These are people who understand our problems. If he has not seen doom so before. See, that's the, that, that's the challenge. I repeat, we have the pension for selecting people to lead us at the same time ring fencing them or protecting them, insulating them from the very problems they are supposed mm. to be addressing. Mm. And if we do that, then this is, these are some of the things we have. So you would have, me, look, I don't, I, I want to be, I want to be quite charitable, you know, yes. there are certain things that popping up in my mind that I don't know. But the point is that it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense, okay, for us as a nation to continue to experience doom so and then be offered explanations and to be forced to keep quiet about it. We don't like it, but you see, it's like we are beating you, but don't cry. If you cry, we'll beat you the more. So you are suppressing us. I think it is unfair. The minister's comments um, when he was asked about timetable, um, I, I am analyzing the <coughs> chances of those who are expected um, to feature in the selection of running mates to Dr. Baumia. I'm analyzing the chances. After listening to the minister and after reading from John Buedu that some front runners may be disappointed, I think I concluded that maybe he's no longer a front runner in the selection of who becomes a running mate. Yes, I'm Please saying no, that. Yeah, I'm, said. Yes, I'm saying that. Yes, he initially, my view, was among the key front runners. Okay, but after mm -hmm. listening to his responses, mm -hmm. uh, watching his body language and the way and manner he went about, you know, his, his responses. And then comparing it to what John Wilder has recently said, that some front runners may be disappointed, I felt that maybe um, he's no longer being considered or he's no longer part of, mm. the, of, the, of the front runners. But, but honestly, I mean, to be charitable, it's, it's a nice man. To be charitable, I, I think that he could have been more sober in his utterances. Okay, as right. somebody that some people even were thinking about you, that you could possibly partner about me. He could have been more sober in his um, um, responses, and um, he could have shown a certain uh, nationalism in his responses in a manner that 
would make people know that, oh, well, you care about the people of Ghana in addressing this particular national crisis. It's a national crisis. Mm -hmm. And so if you have the opportunity to speak to it, you should demonstrate a certain patriotism, a certain statesmanship, and a certain sobriety. That's the reason why any time Akufuado was coming to address us in our home during the COVID-19 pandemic, he said, fellow Ghanaians, you could see a certain sobriety in the way and manner he addressed us. And so you expect a minister of energy to be more sober in offering responses and not to demonstrate that boisterousness and 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 all those so with right. respect to I, I think it could have been more sober in responding to this issue of national crisis his responses in my view epitomized the arrogance of political power and let me say that maybe a lot of people do not know but when we were trying to analyze the factors that led to the electoral defeat of the MP, uh, sorry, uh, uh, the electoral outcome of the 2020 elections, you know, after our analysis, we described the MPP's performance as a victory for the party, but with a taste of defeat. Victory, the MPP's performance in the 2020 election was a victory for the party, but with a taste of defeat. And one of the factors that we <coughs> identified um, as accounting for that kind of performance was a show of arrogance by some appointees. And I thought that I would draw attention to okay. it, that if you are seeking to break an eight and you are confronted with questionings about a matter that, is, that has plagued us into crisis, you become sober in your response. Right. It is important for us to also point to the fact that, you see, it is this same attitude that made the ruling party lose its major constituency, mm -hmm. academics. Okay? Formally, if we're talking about MPP, you saw, MPP saw academics as a major part of them. Academics generally were, 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 were cons are conservatives and then they are MPP in outlook. But this same attitude brought about the introduction of what we call a public universities bill. And the way a manner they wanted, and it was under a minister, uh, um, this same minister, the way a manner he wanted to force it down the throat of people, uh, of, 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 of academics, you know. And the way we fought against it um, brought a certain frosty relationship between um, academics and then this particular regime, mm. but it was this particular problem was brought about by the same minister. Right. And so I'm thinking that um, in trying to lead, one must take a second look at how you publicly um, respond and carry yourself in a right. manner that does not show arrogance. Because mm. after all, I mean, on what basis do you want to be arrogant um, to Ghanaians? Power does not belong to you. Okay. We gave your regime power and they appointed you. And so why will you want to be... Because of what? Because okay. you have what that we didn't mm -hmm. give to you. And so please, with, with respect, I mean, I want to be charitable. Okay. I think that those duty bearers, those people who are privileged to have received political appointment to serve us, must always think about national interest. They must always think about where that would suit our pain and our frustration when they get the opportunity to address us, particularly when we are plagued with national crisis. You cannot go there and be talking, sounding like um, Ghana belongs to you. Ghana okay. does not belong to you. Indeed. Professor Jambo, thank you. And, and uh, my elder, now, let me also say that uh, Professor uh, and okay, entry will have his take on this matter. He's still with us as well. Now, the last time I checked, ESLA, which was set up to defray the debt in the energy sector, had accrued in excess of 10 billion Ghana cities. Where's that money? What's happening? Why are we not able to raise from, from my sources, some $50 million to buy fuel, to power plants. What's going on? Well, thank you very much once again for the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> I will do two things. One, I will deal with the issue of 
the Minister for Power, uh, Honorable Napo, uh, his response, because his response uh, clearly tries to draw some parallels between the experiences that we're going through now and what he says we went through 300 times under John Dramani Mahama. It is true that under President John Dramani Mahama, we suffered considerable power outage. And that was what brought in the vocabulary of Dumso. We're all here, we're all living here. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if Napo was in this country. The problem of power outage did not start under John Dramani Mahama. Mm -hmm. I was around, and I'm sure many of you were around. This problem started under President Kufo. If you recall, we were so desperate to try and resolve the issue that people like Reku Brobi went in and brought gensets that were later reputed to be toys. And <laughs> even there were allegations that they were running on aviation fuel mm -hmm. and all sorts of things. If you recall, mm -hmm. it became a major national scandal that in the desperation of the government to deal with the problem, mm -hmm. they had gone to bring us toys, some like two megawatt power mm -hmm. plants and etc. And they couldn't solve the problem. They were sitting in Tema. In fact, at that time, because our major source of supply or generation was hydro, the allegation at all times was that the Akosumbo Dam mm -hmm. and Pong Dams had inadequate supply of water. And I recall that in May 20, 2007, pastors and prophets mm -hmm. had Where to assemble at Akosumbo yeah. to pray to God to bring the rains. To bring the rains. So that a yeah, 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 we can get power. So that we can get power. This was an idea Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're suffering power outages. Yes, yes I remember. True. We just didn't call it doom so. And NDC was in opposition. We didn't make it such a propaganda matter. We all admitted that it was a national problem. And how did it come about? Like he said, as a nation that is seeking to develop, as you expand, your economy expands your power consumption needs also expands. And Rollis had come with an ambitious program of extending electricity to all parts of the country. Unlike NPP, that came to the north and said no, they would rather subsidize kerosene prices because it was practically impossible to share the energy generated at Akosombo with the rest of the country and still be sustainable. I recall Professor Edi that was his major offer to the north. Well, he said, every village in the north must get electricity. So he embarked on the rural electrification oh, really? program, mm -hmm. expanding access. So as he expanded access, typical of us as a country, we failed to plan ahead. Because we had Akosumbo, which was about 900 and something 980. megawatts, mm -hmm. 980 megawatt generation capacity. Then we had the World Bank also sponsor Pong, which was like a 150 or something, 160 megawatts, adding to the 900. So we just had a little over 1,000 megawatts installed capacity. And Rollins took over what, in 81. Mm -hmm. And then in 82, Pong started. I get the situation. Mm -hmm. And by 83, he launched his ambitious program to extend electricity to all parts of uh, the country. So by the time Kufo assumed office, okay, our demand had increased beyond the capacity of our various hydroelectric power plants. And so he quickly also sought support from the Chinese and started work on Bui. He didn't see the completion of Bui. Bui was completed under President Atemels, which added 400 megawatts. So the early days of Atamels, things were generally okay. But the days of Kufo was fraught with serious problems of power outages. 
and he tried to solve it to the best of his ability. But again, it wasn't adequate. So when John came, just after Artemis' era, our demand continued to soar, and our generation capacity hadn't expanded. So we're faced with the problem once again of doom so. Let's say generation shortfalls. And he decided to face it head on. Of course, I also believe that there was some panic reaction. I have to be, you know, I like to be very honest about things, okay? Mm -hmm. When my side makes mistakes, I say, we made mistakes. Absolutely. As part of the panic reaction, we oversubscribed to arrangements with, you know, okay. uh, independent power producers. But it's, all, it's also the uncertainty in the sector. In a sense, it could be panic reaction, but then also it can be a positive thing mm -hmm. because you could be accumulating so much because you are looking at the future. So what will be the case in 10 years' time? It's so it would will we, not be needed yeah, at that would time. We need all this. And then secondly, we also had the facility of the West African power pool, which was an arrangement where if you generated excess, you could sell to the rest of West Africa. Mm -hmm. And West Africa had agreed and started constructing the infrastructure for the distribution across the sub-region. So that anyone who had excess capacity, your neighbors could rely on you. You just spoke about how Burkina was is still relying on us. You talk about how Togo is relying on us. You talk about how Benin is relying on us. You talk about how we are relying to some extent on Ivory Coast. I am, or I used to be in the ECOWAS parliament, and I go around and I see how some countries are not anywhere near where we are, and they will need such facilities as what we, we have the capacity to generate. So yes, you can say, oh, why did you subscribe to too much? How much is too much? Today, you just admitted that whilst today our generation capacity is about 5,000, mm -hmm. is that okay? Yeah, our, peak, 4, our peak is almost 4,000. Mm -hmm. That means that even what we did, we'll soon be running short. True. But we didn't stop there. After subscribing to, you know, privatization, liberalization of the sector, mm -hmm. and then opening it up and allowing people to come in and generate, we then realized that you needed to also deal with the distribution system. And that's why we had this arrangement with America, MCA, MCA Compact 2, and said, let's invest that money in power the power sector, mm -hmm. the distribution. Because if we solve the generation and we don't deal with the distribution, we wouldn't have solved the problem. So, the visionary John Ramani Mahama, who you underrate, saw the need to deal with the distribution aspect and committed Compact 2 to dealing with the distribution. So, funds were secured. You came and you called the bluff of the American government. They should take their money away. You came and started us with some unprecedented scandal of giving such a strategic asset to political cronies who had absolutely no capacity to solve the problem until Ghanaians rose up in arms before you, you, you could back off. Western, we admitted that the problem of the sector had generated huge debts, legacy debts. We had to convince Ghanaians, you oppose the passage of the, you know, the energy sector levy. And we said, look, it is essential to comprehensively, yes, you, it is essential to comprehensively resolve the energy sector. If you don't have the funding, like you are talking today, if you don't have the funding, a dedicated funding source, to deal first with the legacy debt and to create an opportunity as a backup to continue to invest True. in the sector True. until you have really cleaned up the sector where the private sector, like petroleum sector, is generating and then selling mm -hmm. efficiently and therefore there's full cost recovery. Then you may say, okay, any sector levy, you are no longer needed. Mm -hmm. So please... We are, you know, abolishing energy sector levy. This was strategic thinking, excellent planning, which was being well executed by President John Dramani Mahama. You came into office based on total misrepresentation to Ghanaians that he was responsible for doing so. We probably failed to communicate the problem to Ghanaians, but we solved the problem. Now you have come. Eight years down the line, seven years down the line, where there is no demonstrated problem of lack of national generation capacity. There's no problem. Mm. There is internally a capacity to generate as much energy 
as we need. What is the problem? The problem is because you have mismanaged the finances of this country. You have squandered the money kept in the energy sector levy accounts. You have mismanaged the dollar. So because we, we had the arrangements with the IPPs in dollar terms, mm -hmm. is that okay? And at that time, the dollar was around 3 to the CD. Mm -hmm. Then today, you have the dollar 13. mismanaged the point where it's 13.5, 13. 13.7, 13. 13. mm -hmm. some of you say 13.75. Mm -hmm. And yet you are selling the energy to the consumer in CDs. When you take that money, <laughs> you try to convert it into dollars to pay the, the producers. You have a big problem. You will have a big problem. <laughs> you know? Mm. The truth of the matter is that some of the producers have just had it to their limit. They have borrowed and borrowed and borrowed to try and keep us living with light until it has gotten to a point where it is unsustainable for them. I think uh, under the capital for mechanism, some $43 million is supposed to be paid every month. It is. Look, them. they just don't have the money to pay. You see, the IPPs are not talking. Because like he said, they don't want to get involved in the politics. Mm. So they don't talk. But those who know what is happening in the energy sector, who are friends there, who you call and ask, but chief, what is happening? They would say, look, talk to your people to pay us. He hasn't told you that he's old, but just say, talk to your people to pay us. Mm. So basically the problem really is that they are not being paid. And they are not being paid because the government of President Akufado and Baumia, who claim to be financial messiahs, who could solve the problems of this country financially, have so mismanaged it that even basic electricity we can't pay for. That's what it is. So I agree with, uh, what do they call it? Uh, what's his name? Napo. That the doomso of John Mahama is not the same as the doomso of Akufo Ado. Because the doomso of John Mahama was an inevitable development. Mm -hmm. But the doomso of Akufo Ado is the recklessness, the epitome of a reckless government. That has destroyed all the infrastructure and opportunities for creating a stable power generation system. That has destroyed all the systems put in place to create a stable financing of the energy sector. That has exposed us with the recklessness in the management of the dollar. So I asked about ESLA. And, in, in the, the, and it, it, so how can the doomso of Akufo Adu, which is self-inflicted, be the same as the doomso of John Ramani Mahama? Something that he inherited had okay. no way but to plunge into it. But like the brave man he, he was, he confronted it. He even fired his ministers who promised to deal with it within certain timelines and failed him. All as part of his effort to strategize and get us out of it. And by the time he left office, he had taken us out of it. That's why the first four years you came, you are boasting that, oh, uh, well, we, we, we kept lights on for four years, and now that the, 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 there are problems. How much did you generate in the four years that you can be boasting that you kept lights on for the four years? How much did you generate? How much in, in generation capacity did you install in the country? It was a John Ramani Mahama, you know, resolve problem. So okay. that is the situation. So I can, I can sympathize with uh, my very good friend, uh, Napo, because Popo. when the truth catches up with you, sometimes you get frustrated. You don't even know what to say again. Would you support <laughs> that call for an audit of the, of the energy sector levy? <laughs> you know, there's the, a lot the, I can the, say against the, you. The, know the, that. the ESLA. I refuse. Because <laughs> to do the there is so a refuse. call for an <laughs> for you the audit of. Four years with seven months. I refuse that. I okay. refuse to do the politics you are doing. You, you are politics. saying that the I'm only okay, problem okay, there okay. is is generation of power. You exactly. But you are saying I the only that problem that is only that generation. That wait, wait, so wait, wait, once you I generate, you is solved. That's listen, what you are saying. Listen, you you listen, are even listen, ignoring the whole on, value that, chain. And you are saying that because you generated up to 5,000 and you admit that there was excess. I mean, this thing we are doing. You think that is what solved the people's problem? Okay, okay. And you think you are saying that you solved it before we came? Hey, are you sure? That's it. You are saying that. Okay. You okay. fired your minister who <laughs> promised that if within a short time he hasn't finished, he himself will fire himself. So, so, okay. fire, so he couldn't so do fire, it. Right. So he couldn't okay. do it. Okay. 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 Okay.
That has driven us to where we are. As a nation. Is the planning bit. Planning. As a nation. Yeah, yes. I agree with that. Okay. I admit it. The government has really failed woefully. You embarked on a program called One District, One Factory. Where are you going to power that? You have gone around commissioning projects, right? Yeah. You should understand that once these projects, these factories, one central comes on board, he would need power. Once you are commissioning you know, cassava factories, starch factories, if every factory you commission, under that one district, one factory, right? Planning should tell you that they will come and consume power. And you think they didn't do that? If we did, we won't be here. Oh, really? We won't be here. Really? really? You see, okay. lawyer, I would, you, I, would, you, I, would say, I would say this. Mm -hmm. be, beyond the first four years was the need to have mm -hmm. added something, right? Again, some of the power plants would get obsolete and old. Thank you very then much. Then we decided also... That Ameri should not sit uh, in the Western Enclave. Mm -hmm. We should move it now to Kumasi. Yes. Forgetting that the gas you would need to power Ameri is not in Kumasi. Okay. <laughs> so we shoot our own selves in the foot. We don't plan. If you want, you know, a certain booster point, right, mm -hmm. to ensure that whatever power you are picking from the Eastern Enclave, right, towards and Koko or something, there's a booster point. That gives you a certain stable power to distribute to the, the northern sector from Ashanti to Bronga Afo towards the northern where Netco doesn't cover. We could have planned a lot better. Okay. But lawyer, we have failed. And so it, times are catching it, up with us. It, and it, we are, rather we are making excuses. No, so that's the essential matter. So and we have just so no for you, you leave at Duncan, I know you, you have to leave. Thank it's you. a financial problem has to be dealt with and with, with proper planning. It is not only Thank a financial you. problem. There's a whole that, chain. We but, have to look but, at the whole chain. But you, yeah, after the, the technical so issues, the this is you I talk about it. Oh, Thank you. Oh, oh, I'll, 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 I'll go for a quick break. When I go for a quick break, I'll, 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 I'll be back shortly. Stay with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah.